Well, uh, thank you very much for detailed uh, introductions, and it's a long way to come. Uh, and also, thank you very much for the invitation, Mark. Uh, this is wonderful. I, it took uh, 17 hours to uh, come to Berlin from Japan, but it's worthwhile, and I learned a lot and a lot of stimulus you know, coming out uh, from this uh, session, uh, each session. Uh, it's really uh, wonderful that I was here and uh, joined you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, today, uh, my intention is uh, to address the theme for this uh, conference from Japanese perspective. Uh, Japan is on the cusp of dramatic uh, social change. I hope that uh, in relating our experiences, I can provide some hints for the dilemmas uh, facing uh, by various uh, countries around the world. <coughs> the period uh, stretching from the 1960s to the 1980s uh, was a golden age of uh, rapid economic growth in Japan. Uh, like uh, present-day China, uh, Japan constantly had a GDP in the range of 70% or 10% we baby boomers uh, both uh, supported this growth and enjoyed its fruits. The eyes of the world were focused on Japan at the time. Many countries wondered where the secret of the Japanese uh, miracle lay. Nowadays, but however, the situation is totally different. Uh, Japan has shifted from the economic growth pattern of developing nation uh, to the social and economic structure of mature, developed nation. Uh, this shift was changed our society in a whole variety of ways. It has, at its root, uh, two main causes, I think. The first is a sudden transformation, transformation of Japan, demo uh, Japanese uh, democratic, I mean demographic uh, makeup. Uh, a falling birth rate and growing society have now propelled us into a situation where our total population is starting to decrease. The second reason uh, is uh, globalization or internationalization. With the fluid moment, I mean fluid uh, movement of capital and markets on a global scale, uh, corporations have shifted their attention from domestic to international markets. Uh, they are now uh, fighting to survive amidst fierce international competition. In response to these uh, dra dramatic social changes, uh, policies uh, totally opposed to our nation's cultural and social norms have become significant political uh, flashpoints nowadays. Uh, let me cite two issues uh, which typify uh, this, this phenomenon. The first, uh, fa the first uh, relates to corporate uh, orga organization and in particular to how we should deal with the flexible labor force uh, that may be needed to cope with changes in the corporate environment or uh, globalization. The other issue is a split with uh, traditional Japanese family values uh, that develops uh, when proceeding with the policies that call for child rearing uh, to be shared by the whole society, such as an universal child allowance. Uh, such policies are designed to deal with uh, instabilities in um, employment and the home environment itself and with the pressure to a falling birth rate. Uh, first of all, uh, let me discuss the dilemma we face when drafting corporate and labor policies to cope with the massive changes in Japanese economic structure. When Japan was experiencing uh, miraculous economic growth, uh, she was perceived as both a role model and a threat uh, by countries around the world. Singapore's uh, Lee Kuan Yew urged his countrymen uh, to 
could look east and make the hardworking, studious, and well-mannered Japanese a role model for Singapore's development. In Europe and the United States, the Sony Walkman uh, provided music for the cars, uh, ear, e for the ears of joggers and the commuters. Japanese products from television and washing machines to fridges and automobiles were admired for their efficiency. Toyota was overrun with visitors from European and American corporations wanting to learn about just-in-time inve inventories and other industrial improvements. Meanwhile, uh, protests from workers in various countries who had lost their jobs as a result of Japan's export-led stance also began to increase. Strikes, demonstrations, and even the destruction of Japanese cars took place in the United States. From around this time, big Japanese uh, manufacturers started to move their factories overseas, partly with aim of com combating the rising yen. As we were uh, engaging in direct investment in the United States, many corporations took advantage of the cheap labor encouraged by Deng Xiaoping's economic reforms to shift production from Japan to China. Corporation also expanded uh, proactively into other Asian nations, uh, such as Indonesia, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. In many of the countries, the technical transfer of Japanese-style production management and the detailed product control procedures uh, took place. Nowadays, Many products made under the influence of, uh, of these technical transfers have flowed back onto the Japanese market. Uh, they have shaken up the production, production base of the small and medium-sized business, which were unable to expand overseas. They are fighting uh, themselves in Japan, inside of Japan. Japanese corporations have shifted away from a reliance on domestic uh, manufacturing by moving factories overseas and engaging in direct investment and M&As abroad. As a result, Japan's domestic manufacturing industry has been hollowed out and the corporate activity focused on the world stage. Currently, Japanese companies active in the world markets have reached a major turning point in their history. They were faced with the challenge of creating new social management philosophies in order to win out in the race to secure a share of the global retail market. Consequently, many Japanese believe it is necessary to change our nation's industrial structure in order to revitalize our shrinking domestic economy and return it to a growth track. Many of the changes needed uh, for this would challenge traditionally rooted culture and corporate management styles in Japan. I believe they will also engender a huge political debate. One issue is the argument that the labor needs to be moved flexible. Uh, this concept is directly opposed to the traditional labor practice of Japanese corporations, which have long operated on the principle of a job for life. Corporations have traditionally avoided firing employees, dealing with, uh, uh, dealing with the economic uh, fluctuations by reassigning workers or seconding them to affiliates. However, following the rapid rise of China and other developing economies, the dispatch labor law uh, was uh, created around 20 years ago, 
and this legislation heralded the introduction of uh, fixed term employment in the field of manual labor. Currently, more than 30% of all workers are employed on fixed term contracts and work in the unstable environment of the irregular labor market. The current argument for reforming the structure of industry proposes that uh, corporations should be able to more easily fire the remaining 70% of permanent workers employed on the basis of a job for life. The rationale is that if the abilities of a particular individual do not meet the abilities required by a company, then their changing jobs will optimize the abilities of both uh, companies and individuals. This is a reasoning, but this rationale should, in theory, head to the uh, revitalization of Japanese companies and Japanese industry, but we are extremely doubtful if this is really compatible with Japanese social values. The principle of lifelong employment and deter determining salaries and allocation of company posts based on seniority are deeply rooted in Japanese society. Many Japanese corporations were established as family farms in the post-war uh, reconstruction period and are run under the ethos that management and workers work together as one unified family. Uh, that is the reason behind the almost uh, fanatical love and the loyalty that Japanese workers showed throughout their companies uh, in the period of high economic growth. The family values were extended to corporate management with workers living for their company, much as uh, they did for their family. For management, for management too, uh, the high moral standards of workers bound to the company by firm bonds of loyalty was seen as essential to long-term development of the company itself. As a result, it was an important business norm to protect workers' jobs during uh, tough times. Turning to the workers' side, it is a peculiar char char characteristic of Japan that individual labor unions are organized on a company basis so that the management of a company and its labor union is uh, intimately intertwined. Thus, workers have a strong sense of identity with their company rather than with the particular professional professions as a whole. However, the increasing uh, globalization of world economy over the past decade has caused the business norms of Japanese companies to change dramatically. One reason for this is that the expansion of investment funds has caused corporate values to shift from a focus on the long term to the short term pursuit of profit. Furthermore, under traditional Japanese values, the company has been viewed as the uh, property of all its workers. However, this uh, perception is no, long, no longer uh, valid. Increasingly, the truth is being brought home that the company actually belongs to investors, not workers. I believe uh, that Japanese uh, corporations do not uh, need to make a drastic change to their essential makeup itself. It is obvious that the family-like uh, company ties and the pride and loyalty which workers feel towards their company and an extremely significant engine for corporate management over the long term uh, future. However, there is increasing political pressure to revise uh, legislation in order to make uh, labor more flexible. The governing parties are planning to carry out legal revi revisions uh, to this effect. And if Japanese style management norms are to be created under such uh, circumstances, our discussions are only just beginning. And uh, it would be the one of the 
uh, most uh, ma major major uh, theme that we are going to take uh, for the next session of uh, our uh, uh, next session. And another issue we face in the midst of such uh, social change is that of introducing a universal child allowance. Uh, the decrease in Japan's population poses a number of serious uh, questions for Japanese uh, politicians. Not only do we have to consider how child rearing and uh, family life should ideally take place, but also how to maintain the pension, medical, and long-term care system. Four years ago, the uh, baton of uh, government uh, passed from the Liberal Democratic, Democratic Party, which had maintained power for almost 60 years in the post-war period uh, to my party. The uh, Democratic Party of Japan, or DPJ. One huge impetus for regime change was the imminent collapse of the child rearing and social welfare system. The DPJ campaign called for sweeping reforms and the creation of new systems. One of the actual policies was the implementation of universal child allowance. The idea was to realize a system akin to one and that had already been implemented in various European nations. In order to ensure that responsibility of child rearing lies not just with parents or households, but with society as a whole, various child care options were to be enhanced and a child allowance of a set amount per child established. The Liberal Democratic Party at that time in opposition criticized this as being a vote-grabbing waste of, t of money. And they argued that child rearing is naturally the responsibility of the parents. Uh, this argument uh, garnered a great deal of support among women of middle age and older, astonishingly and uh, who had uh, struggled to bring up their children without such uh, assistance. They, they, they did it, they accomplished it, so there's no need for the youngers to, to, to have this kind of assistance. This is the, the sort of sentiment of uh, these uh, uh, women of that age. We were uh, concerned by this. Uh, we had believed a policy would be overwhelming supported by women. But in fact, when we implemented it, we found that we ran up again the huge barrier posed by traditional family values. In the general election, three and a half years later, we were unable to gain active support from women and found ourselves handing over the reins of power uh, to the Liberal Democ Democratic Party once again. But this is not the only reason, but there are other <laughs> reason, reasons too. Uh, I, fee I feel that uh, this is a good example of how we must make further adjustments in line with Japanese social values when introducing such valuable European policy experience into our society. Finally, I'd like to touch uh, on one last issue operating to international, uh, I mean, pertaining to international affairs. Uh, this is a pretty much a sensitive uh, uh, theme that for Japan and also uh, neighbor countries in ca uh, Korea, South Korea, and China. It is yes, Yasukuni Shrine uh, theme. Uh, due to a failure to settle differences uh, concerning culture and historical uh, perception, this is an issue that has remained unresolved uh, between Japan and our neighbors China and the Republic of Korea over many years. This issue involves a visit by senior politicians to Yasukuni Shrine. In the post-war period, the Allied nations held the Tokyo trials 
uh, to determine responsibility for World War II. During the trials, Japan's wartime leaders were convicted as war criminals. Just as Hitler and other leaders of Nazi Germany were convicted as being responsible for the war, so in Japan, the military leadership centering on General Hi Hideki Itojo uh, took responsibility. Every year, as August 15th, the Memorial Day uh, marking the end of World War II draws uh, near, diplomatic tensions between Japan and China and the Republic of Korea rise. First, there is a speculation that the Prime Minister of Japan and other cabinet members will visit uh, Yasukuni uh, Shrine. If such a visit does, does in fact take place, not only the governments on both sides, but also mass media and individual citizens themselves uh, start finger pointing wildly. Consequently, a whole variety of uh, democratic uh, uh, diplomatic uh, negotiations end up being hindered. Yasukuni Shrine is a shrine derived from Shinto. It's uh, Japan's indigenous uh, religion. It has a view of life and death in which m any human being died can become a divine spirit. The spirits enshrined for worship in Shinto shrines thus include not only the gods of ancient Japanese mytho mythology, but also persons from the historic record who have been enshrined as uh, deities after death. Since the Meiji period, the spirit of soldiers, uh, political leaders, doctors, nurses, and students mobilized to work during the war time who lost their lives fighting for the government and uh, Imperial Japan in overseas or civil wars have been enshrined at Yasukuni. Uh, those who were convicted as war criminals at uh, the Tokyo trials are also enshrined there as are the spirits of people from Taiwan and Korean Peninsula once occupied uh, by Japan. Cabinet members and those who lost uh, blood relatives in uh, past wars who go to pray at Yasukuni say, say that. They go there in a tribute to the natural view of life and death held by Japanese people and that the spirits enshrined at Yasukuni have become deities who, who uh, become deities who protect the peace of Japanese society. In particular, uh, those who visit the shrine on August 15 explain that they go there to vow that Japan will never again wage war. However, seen from the viewpoint of the people of China and Korea, or maybe some other sections of the world, who were invaded and trans, uh, tram, trampled on during the past war and from that of the United States and Europe, uh, visit to Yasukuni take on a rather different ex expression. From their perspective, senior government officials are visiting a place where those convicted of war crimes are enshrined. They say that such visits amount to worship of war criminals, and that it is only natural this will be perceived as denying war responsibility and attempting to glorify and legitimize the war itself. Concerns are uh, expressed that such acts by senior government officials may lead to Japan's military expansion and the rise of nationalistic uh, sentiment Criticism made that Japan does not truly regret her past mistake. For many Japanese, particularly the older generation who lost uh, loved ones in the war, the view of life and death in which the spirits of our ancestors still watch over us is an everyday matter 
and visit to Yasukuni and local Shinto shrines uh, are an extension of this kind of uh, uh, theory or, or value. Thus, many, in fact, feel a great deal of confusion when acts of worship, which they perceive as prayers for peace, are criticized as uh, representing a resurgence of militarism of Japan. On the political level, uh, various solutions to this issue, such as creating a new national memorial for the war dead that would exclude, ex exclude the war criminals uh, being debated. However, many politicians and uh, ordinary Japanese still hold fast to the idea that there is no reason to alter Japan's unique view of life and death and religious deities. The vast majority of these people have no intention of affirming uh, Japan's past uh, militarism, and in fact only intend to display their pride in the path taken by post-war Japan. We politicians need to consider how we can obtain the understanding of the international community, community uh, for Japanese religious uh, practice, but at the same time, it is necessary that we promote understanding among the Japanese people regarding the way that such uh, practices are perceived internationally and in particular by the people of China and Korea. Currently, there is a tendency in the nations concerned, including Japan, for the government of the day to politicize the issue and use it to whip up nationalistic feeling among their citizens. I believe that now is a time for us to bring an end to this uh, movement and return to realistic uh, policies. In conclusion, I would like to convey our resolution to you. The Japanese government is working to pr promote Japanese culture to the world under the banner of so-called uh, cool Japan. Japan's image abroad started out as one of an exotic place uh, like uh, uh, in uh, Ukiyo-e, uh, Mount Fuji, and geishas. To this was added the image of uh, hardworking and uh, technically skilled people who produce high quality electronic uh, goods, cameras and aut automobiles, and of a newly uh, prosperous uh, country that had achieved miraculous economic development. However, I feel that Japan's cultural image overseas has been changing over the last few years. From pop culture such as animation, fashion, and cuisine uh, to our daily lifestyle itself, Japanese society has started to transmit a different aspect of itself to the world. As, as, as I mentioned uh, previously, Japan's birth rate is falling and her society aging at a rate hitherto unprecedented in human history. Currently, 25% of the population is over 65 years old. If this trend continues, by 2060, those over 65 years old will occupy the half of the total population. And should this actually occur, there is no way that we will be able to create a sound social system. I believe we need to do three things mainly. One is to create a society in which uh, people can raise their children free from anxiety. And second, to encourage a new lifestyle uh, uh, to give seniors a new lease of life. And the third, to make Japan a country whose doors are more open to immigration itself. The reason for the change in Japan's image and the transmission of a new kind of Japanese culture overseas lies in the fact that we have embarked on a fresh challenge, very different from that of the years of rapid economic growth. Uh, religious, culture, and lifestyle values are uh, all showing signs of shifting toward those of mature society. 
we are being called upon to reconsider a whole variety of social structures, including individual lifestyles, families, ch ch child rearing, communities, and uh, corporations. These are also cutting edge challenges for the entire human race. I hope Japan can serve as a role model by creating a model society that finds ways to use the falling birth rate and the aging of society to our advantage. And we will try to unearth the key to the problems that developed nations around the world will face in years ahead. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nakagawa. And uh, we open the floor for comments or questions. Thank you, Mr. Nakagawa, for your wonderful presentation. I just want to ask in what way... Uh, my name is uh, Sergei Panamarev. I am from Moscow, from Institute for Biomedical Problems. Uh, uh, Mr. Nakagawa, uh, I just want to ask a question. In what way do you think uh, our future relationships with uh, Japan, Russian-Japan's relationships, should be uh, developed. Uh, do you think uh, that in uh, the modern world, in the modern culture, maybe in some uh, branches of uh, science and uh, maybe some uh, other way, we should just forget some uh, conflicts uh, and to develop our relationships and to put it on, a new le on, on the new level? Thank you. Well, uh, the Japanese uh, people and also especially the people in the business are pretty much interested in, in the, op the possibility or opportunity of uh, investment in the in, in eastern part of uh, Russia. And uh, some of the development of uh, uh, gas uh, welling has now uh, started uh, and uh, uh, we are ready to receive uh, the natural gas and also uh, you know coming into Japan and besides that uh, I think there is a lot of uh, possibility that we can uh, communicate more and also uh, culturally understanding more but uh, the problem is uh, four islands that we are disputing uh, right now uh, well we have to s s uh, I'm not sure we can settle down this uh, problem for like a short term uh, perspective perspective uh, I myself uh, is, is the uh, side that we should promote more uh, the communication with uh, Russia besides besides uh, these uh, four uh, islands uh, otherwise I think it takes time to settle down the total you know uh, uh, political uh, setting of uh, four islands, uh, we have to wait long for long. And we cannot wait that. I mean, we have, we should uh, try to uh, seek a certain uh, way uh, for the more uh, relationship or more more uh, intimate uh, uh, understanding of uh, both countries. Yes. Uh, Hello, my name is Paul Yorapu, and uh, I am doing my MA here at AICD. Uh, thank you, Honorable, for that wonderful presentation. Um, I was expecting to hear something about the Japan Foundation as a tool that Japan is using to promote uh, its national culture and making a reconciliation among uh, other nations around the world. 
Uh, you didn't say something about that. I would like you to say something about the Japan Foundation and related to how it can also uh, foster relationship among the neighboring countries around uh, surrounding Japan. Uh, it's unfortunate that the focus of this conference is on Europe, uh, USA, Russia, and China. But uh, yeah, forgetting Japan. Yes, <laughs> no, not forgetting Japan, but um, not including uh, the, the, the countries around uh, Japan. So the activities of the Japan Foundation for the past years, I think, have been very important. I studied it in the class, and I, ex I, I expected that you would ma mention something about it. I think it's very important. So what do you think about the activities of the Japan Foundation? Uh, are they focusing uh, too much on the, um, uh, too much attention to, to the US and Africa <laughs> and Europe <laughs> and uh, avoiding the, the nations that uh, ah. are neighboring uh, Japan? Ah. Yeah. Ah, you point out uh, very important aspects of uh, cultural exchange, uh, uh, the strategy of Japan. I think uh, the neighbor countries like South Korea or uh, China, or you know, th these, these countries, uh, we have, uh, I think, pretty uh, common uh, root of culture, like uh, Chinese characters or the expression of uh, uh, ideas and value systems. In from ancient uh, Japan, we observed a lot, lot of uh, Conf Confucianism and, and uh, Buddhism. And so many, many fundamental values uh, coming from these countries. So that uh, still we have a uh, lot of uh, channels uh, to communicate uh, in, in these countries, uh, including uh, movies uh, or pop cultures or whatever you have and also there are many uh, people going to Korea or China from Japan and also the other way around and so many uh, students now are studying uh, in Japan uh, from China and from Korea especially in China and uh, these situations I think uh, uh, observing the uh, Japan Foundation and uh, uh, they tend to focus on uh, the United States or Europe or Africa, uh, especially. Uh, this is, I think, uh, one of the tendencies. But uh, we need, I mean, we all know that the, the uh, Republic of Korea and, and China uh, and Taiwan are very important uh, neighbors uh, for us. So that uh, uh, we need uh, some sort of a uh, coming back, I mean, the, the, the soft power uh, should be focused upon these neighbors too, uh, like you pointed out. If I may, let me uh, abuse my role as a uh, moderator here to also ask you a question, yes. uh, and uh, a few questions, uh, in many ways touching on some conversations that you and I have had privately, but I think it'd be great also for the participants to benefit from your insights as well. First question, what is cultural diplomacy? <laughs> what <Or> is cultural <laughs> diplomacy? From your point well, of view. Okay. Uh, well, uh, one thing is that, uh, you know, as I explained in the uh, uh, case of uh, 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 Yasukuni Shrine, uh, in order to overcome this kind of a uh, close cultural uh, struggle or uh, debate, uh, you have to know uh, the the background and and uh, the way that they think on the other side of the country, and uh, otherwise you cannot uh, communicate or you cannot uh, you know just uh, uh, step uh, up to uh, the next uh, stage, and it's it's one of the I think good example that uh, we have to know uh, the culture and value system and uh, the background of the the others uh, to to overcome this kind of hegemony, uh, uh, and also the politics is, uh, I think, problematic. I mean, uh, even in uh, individuals, in chi Chinese and uh, 
Japanese or Koreans, uh, they they love each other. I mean, they know they they like like each other, and, and they really enjoy uh, the movies uh, from Korea, and the many, especially uh, girls are crazy or, or excited about the actors of you know uh, uh, Koreans and so on, and they they like it, but but. Uh, uh, politics uh, is now doing mess up, messing up the uh, whole uh, stream of the the people. And in order to clean up the uh, uh, political, uh, uh, I mean political management, uh, the people are very important. As far as uh, people are okay, I think the uh, the politics is going to be uh, uh, fixed out. But once the people, uh, you know, go the, the different way, I think it's very dangerous uh, for both countries uh, to, to communicate. So uh, in order to initiate the people's leadership towards uh, the politics, I think this uh, cultural diplomacy is very important and also uh, for the people I think it's enjoyable uh, you know for uh, to, to make it uh, uh, more effective uh, to towards the politics it is the answer <laughs> yeah Excellent. All right. So then my next question is related to the question our one MA student Paul posed in terms of the Japan Foundation. Uh, since you were actually involved in the early days of the Japan Foundation in the 70s, which began in 1972, I'd love to hear from you, first of all, what is the mission of the Japan Foundation specifically, and has that in any way changed or evolved? Because I remember when I was reading it uh, in terms of the founding in the 70s, I thought it was quite innovative and quite modern at the time. And then my second part of the question is looking at Japan and its immediate region. Uh, what strategies are there, perhaps from the Japan Foundation to create more of a regional uh, closeness, or let's say a regional trust uh, between you know South Korea, Indonesia, etc., and some of the the neighbors also of uh, Japan. Well, the main mission of the Japan Japan Foundation is to expand and Japanese culture and the value system and whatever lifestyle uh, tours to 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 the world and to communicate and. Uh, I think the main, main, uh, like the concrete uh, project that they are now doing is to uh, sending the Japanese uh, authentic uh, uh, expert of cultures uh, like uh, a kabuki uh, theater or sometimes smalls and uh, uh, you know the, the wrestling of the Japanese style and also uh, the painters and also uh, some modern music uh, of the Japanese uh, uh, traditional route and uh, these things are to be sent to the various countries and also we invite the experts of uh, uh, Japanese uh, study uh, to Japan and uh, to make research or uh, to have internship in universities and so on and this the second one is uh, to promote the Japanese language all over the world and uh, sending teachers, Japanese uh, language teachers uh, in various uh, universities or some schools, of the language schools and so on. And uh, including uh, uh, these uh, things, uh, we, we, I mean, Japan Foundation uh, uh, organizes uh, uh, various kind of events of uh, uh, Japanese uh, festivities or uh, Japanese uh, uh, cultural uh, rooted uh, uh, events and uh, sometimes uh, it can be organized with the uh, same kind of uh, uh, organizations abroad and get together and, and play uh, together and you know, all this kind of things and also uh, they uh, give the substitute, uh, the private uh, uh, organization or private uh, uh, people, to to do their cultural uh, 
events outside of Japan. And uh, these are the, the concrete, uh, I think, uh, uh, projects that they are dealing with now. And uh, I'm saying that um, uh, they tend to focus upon the non-commercial non uh, cultural activity. And uh, like movies or uh, some, you know, pop cultures, uh, animations, and these these are flourishing by by themselves. N not 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 the help of uh, uh, Japan Foundation, but rather flourishing and commercially, uh, it's going okay. So Japan Foundation is not interested in this field, but. Uh, I'm saying that it's it's not good uh, for them. I mean, uh, they should uh, commit that kind of field and uh, uh, try to 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 promote more and uh, more in 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 effective way uh, to help them uh, spread all over the world. You know, this is <laughs> uh, now I'm I'm myself is pushing uh, the Japan Foundation that way. Any question? Uh, here. Okay. Thank you. My name is Bastian Bakker. I study at the University of Potsdam. And I have a short question about um, the complex and very complicated relationship between China and Japan. Because from a European point of view, it is very hard to understand the whole conflict. <laughs> and I think it is because Germany and France, for example, had wars for hundreds of years and are now very close partners. Do you think uh, do you think some similar relationship is also possible for China and Japan in the next, let's say, 20 years? And if you think even further, maybe can the European Union be a role or have a role model function for the whole southeastern area? Thank you very much. Uh, this is an uh, important point. And uh, it's one of the reasons that I myself is very much interested in, in the future of European uh, Union and also relationship between the France and uh, Germany. Uh, I think we can learn a lot uh, from your experience uh, for the betterment of uh, Japan and China and Korea and some other countries. Uh, well, one, 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 one thing that, the one difference is that um, uh, we have, uh, uh, long, long history, uh, and uh, uh, also uh, in the case of South Korea, uh, they came to be uh, industrialized and modernized uh, uh, country. So that I think uh, the the people, the the, s the sentiment of the people in the both countries are changing, comparing to the olden time. A at that time. Uh, the South Korea is still I in uh, uh, developing countries and, and uh, the le level of income and also the lifestyle is completely different from the J Japanese uh, uh, level. So we had difficulty to communicate in that case. But uh, Korea uh, already has come out and to be uh, industrious and modernized and democratic uh, country. And uh, I think uh, uh, we have more possibility to, co to communicate. But in the, in the case of China, I really hope that uh, they uh, democratize more and uh, also uh, their economic uh, development uh, succeed uh, to the level of uh, uh, not not only the the part of the people just rich, but rather, you know, uh, coming up from the bottom, uh, the people uh, are to be comfortable and the steady uh, life in there and 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 felt uh, by by the people. And that kind of stage, I think, is necessary uh, to communicate each other. And we we wait for that. And also, we have to uh, do our best. Uh, for the uh, sort of a cultural uh, diplomacy and going on and on and also a mi mix out of the people. We have to send more people to China and, and Korea and also we have to 
accept the more people uh, from China and uh, uh, Korea. And that's the uh, way I think uh, we need to do. I'd like to thank you for your presentation. It's very interesting. Um, Japan has been awarded the 2020 uh, Olympics. And if that's not an example of cultural diplomacy, I don't know what is because you will have countries converging on, uh, all countries from all over the world converging on Japan. And there will be a lot of cultural events, I would imagine. But before the ink could dry in the reports that Japan had won had been awarded the uh, the 2020 uh, Olympics, there was talk about whether or not it would even take place. Uh, some consideration by some people around the question of uh, Fukushima. You, uh, we, you overheard a conversation that I was having with some other people, and we got into a discussion, and you provided me with some material uh, outlining the, the current situation there, which I appreciate, and I think that people here should avail themselves of that information to make their own determination. Uh, Japan has been involved in perhaps the first cataclysmic, catastrophic uh, event of the use of uh, atomic energy, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But Japan is not alone in that. We have uh, a Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania, the Enrique Fermo plant, Fermi plant in, in the metropolitan of Detroit. We have Chernobyl and now uh, Fukushima. Could you, uh, at least from your perspective, uh, outline the reassurances that you can give to uh, people who are thinking about Fukushima and Japan as a whole? Because it does affect the whole area. It's not just a question of Japan, but that whole area and then consequently the rest of the world uh, given the uh, spread of the radi radiation. So. What would be your ideas and how would you uh, uh, present uh, reassurances about that issue? Thank you. Uh, you mean the future of uh, atomic energy? How, how no, do we I, I deal with What I mean is visiting, uh, going to Japan, you know, uh, uh, not okay. being worried in, and all in, of that. In the present situation for your, uh, um, I uh, brought uh, uh, this uh, document uh, which you're now explaining the present uh, situation of the risk of radioactive uh, uh, thing, you know, what's going on here. And I, I'll, I'll leave this document uh, to Mark, and uh, uh, if you have interest, I think you have interest, and in uh, please uh, uh, read it through. And uh, during our administration, uh, you know, two years ago, uh, after the tsunami, we decided to abolish the whole uh, nuclear plants altogether within within uh, 30 years and uh, new new uh, plans for our generators are uh, not to be uh, built uh, within 30 30 years in Japan and that that is the our, our uh, uh, policy and uh, made it clear uh, to the people but now uh, the uh, LDP uh, took power, and they are saying that uh, we need more time to, to think about it. <laughs> and uh, uh, within uh, three years, it means that actually it's two years, they will decide what to do with the uh, future of the atomic energy. But, but as a whole, uh, w there is a consensus that uh, we should uh, lower the percentage of uh, uh, nuclear energy, uh, and also uh, to promote uh, the renewable energy and more and more. And also, we, we should uh, put more money uh, to develop the technical or scientific uh, 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 in a way uh, or uh, the method uh, to to solve the radioactive problem and also uh, how to how to clean up the site of uh, Fukushima itself. There is no, s still no way that we can explain how to deal with the site itself. We need uh, new technology and new, new scientific background to solve the problem. So that the Japanese government as well as uh, uh, NEPCO uh, 
to Tokyo Electric Company uh, is open to the world, the experts. Uh, we want the world experts to come to Japan and uh, tell us and how to uh, and give us uh, s you know various kind of a, uh, technical advice and also uh, the contribution uh, to uh, the cleanup process of uh, a radioactive thing. And uh, so far, uh, I think there is going to be a, a big debate whether we, we should abolish uh, the nuclear uh, energy or maintain a certain uh, level of energy. It depends on the, I think, the combination of uh, various kind of uh, energy projects. Unfortunately, we lost the power and administration. Uh, we are now in the opposition party. But uh, we do, uh, I, I personally want to d uh, do my best uh, to, to abolish uh, in the future. So Germany, I don't know what <laughs> hung me in there, I said uh, to the, the Ministry of Germany. Um, I cannot resist but uh, to say something. When you mentioned uh, the Olympics 2020, actually there was one poor Japanese who was evicted from his house in the Olympics of 1964 ah. for the sake of construction. Now the same poor person is evacuated again from his house in 2020 for the same <laughs> for the same reason. So poor man. Anyhow, I will. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for uh, a very interesting uh, speech and also the discussion. I'd like to thank you for participating. And we close for the day. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock again. Thank you very much. OK, thank you very much. <laughs>